I missed you, Mount Hope. We missed you. Man. I, see, I didn't break a leg or nothing. <laughs> Thank you for my prayer warriors. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful to get away with our oldest daughter, uh, Elena. And uh, uh, that's never happened like that. I, uh, that we got away for a weekend and uh, uh, enjoyed one another as a, a pastor Tim shared last week at, um, you know, she's a, uh, a new mama of about a year uh, to our only granddaughter, uh, Anora, and uh, she's just kind of been feeling the weight of the world, so it's like, all right, what does a daddy do, but what daddies do, and uh, we say, come on, girl, let's, uh, let's go get, a, get our head right, and um, she liked to whoop me on some ski slopes. <laughs> uh, we go normally, uh, I'll get together with uh, uh, buddies of mine that uh, uh, I served with in the army over in Germany, and that's where I learned to ski at. We still get together once a year to a, a group of us from uh, uh, the army that uh, we get together and go skiing, and I wasn't able to make it this year, and uh, uh, it was good to, to get back out with Elena, but uh, yes, they, they don't ski as hard as what uh, she did. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm still feeling it a little bit. <laughs> oh, goodness. But, Pastor Tiff, thank you so much for bringing the word. I know I've heard, you know, um, uh, from many of you that, uh, man, she just brought it. And uh, I have been telling you, <laughs> she is a way better preacher than me. I am telling you hands down. And um, um, I tell you. <laughs> well, uh, I, I uh, and, and sometimes, well, every time that I ask somebody, you know, to, to step in to speak, um, I, I never lead them in specifically what to preach or how to preach or, you know, anything like that. I want them to be led of the Lord and I, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Tiff knew that we were going through this discipleship series on the Sermon of the Mount, and we, it's kind of a progressive, uh, you know, sermon, and we were at this particular point, and I told her, I said, look, I said, you have, you know, something she had just preached at the kids' school, um, and she could have knocked it out of the park, because she just spends, you know, hours and hours before the Lord just seeking, you know, his word, but, uh, um, you know, she wanted to continue on with that because I believe, well, we are one, um, but I believe that as that, she's like, has that kind of that same heart of what, you know, God is doing and uh, wanted to continue that. So she pressed in and, and uh, uh, brought a very, very, very timely word. And um, uh, I, I think that that is now uh, up on the YouTube channel. So um, you can watch it if you missed it last week. So uh, well, this week we're going to continue on, and uh, I, I, I got to uh, uh, thinking as I, I, you know, put everything together, um, you know, on, on Sunday mornings, I was thinking, I don't think that I've ever preached on this particular passage of Scripture by itself. I was like, hmm, I don't know that I've ever just preached on murder. <laughs> It's not really one of the common topics nowadays that uh, maybe we, <laughs> but um, if you would turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, we're going to be in, in uh, verse 21, I think we're going to go down to about 26 today, so Matthew chapter 5 verse 21 when you're there, give me a great big shout of an amen. Amen. All right. All right. Anybody need a little time? Just say, hey, give me a little time. Awesome. Hey, as, as we're getting to that word, I wanted to pause just for a second. Um, so I started something a few weeks ago, and I, I wanted to explain it because you guys know how much I, I love our church center app, right? And I, I talk about it dearly. <laughs> so that church center app if uh if you open it up and uh underneath that there's a section on that that's called groups and um and in that groups all right i created a new group all right and in that group i can't even tell you what it says 
pretty much. But it's translated sermons in Haitian Creole. <laughs> so what I have done, I've created a group that if your, your, your language and, and you can, you know, read and speak in Haitian Creole, join that group and under the resources of that, I translate all of my sermon notes in there to where they can follow along in the sermon notes in Haitian Creole. So, uh, so yeah, it, it, it's just a way that, um, you know, hopefully we can, you know, uh, continue to have that, uh, um, that, that spirit of, of unity amongst us all in, in whichever language that we speak. Amen. So, uh, I, 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 was, I, was, I was doing that. I had some of the uh, other notes up, and I would not even begin to know where to um, preach in Matthew chapter 5 in Haitian Creole, but you have it in your hands now that you may be able to read it along with us. So, I'll read in English. How about that? <laughs> so, in Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 21, it says, You have heard it, that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, you Bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge. The judge hand you over to the officer, and the, you will be thrown in prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you, Lord God, for your word. I pray that today that you would open our minds, our hearts, our ears to receive this word. Transform us. Draw us closer to you. Bring revelations to our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's set the stage a little bit again. Jesus is with the multitudes. He says, hey, you, those who believe in me, I want you to come over here. And he draws them close and he draws them and he he's, draws them to this mountain. And there he begins to open his mouth and he speaks to them. And these are his followers. These are the believers. These are the ones that he is pouring himself into. And he is being able to present the word and present himself to them so that they may understand. As Jesus, he started and we see through Matthew chapter 5 and now we're down into verse 21 He's telling them things to re, to allow them to better understand what they have already been taught. He is he's teaching them in a way that they can understand it, but they can fully understand it. And we have this word. How many know that we too can fully understand the word of God? He's, he's created it to be so. And so what he's doing it is, is laying this and presenting this as a foundational principle. So when he says, Jesus, he begins in verse 21, he said, you have heard it said to those of old, you shall not murder. Whoever murders will be in danger of the murder. This, he's talking in, in a reference, he's talking about you have heard it said of the days of old. He said, you have heard it taught to you. You have heard it and read it, you know, within... Um, you know, the, um, uh, the, the Septuagint, you know, the, the first five books of the Bible, you know, he, these are what was the foundational for, you know, the, 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 the Jews. 
in which they can um, understand. So here in Exodus 20, you know, we see that this is where Moses, you know, also going up on the mountain, you know, that he had received that word from God written in stone that we have as the Ten Commandments. Now, the Ten Commandments were that which was referred to as the law, all right? And it's like, hey, don't do these things, you know, you know, and we see, we see, you know, you shall not murder. <laughs> Whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. And and so when he says you shall not murder, he's referring to, you know, not only ten, the Ten Commandments, but, but he says you've heard it said to those, uh, to those of old, meaning the the the, the rabbis and the teachers and the, the the prophets, those who have spoken of the word before this particular time. He said, you've heard this. But do you know that this passage isn't even really talking about murder? Yeah, it talks about murder, but it's not what it's about. It's about the heart of man. And that's what Jesus was getting to. He has to get to the heart of the disciples for them to be able to carry out the commission that they have before them. You see, it's about our inaccuracy to read and to teach the scriptures. He's, this, is, this is why he's telling this to his disciples, that they have been taught incorrectly by their rabbis and the Pharisees and all their other teachers, you know, that when it comes to sin, we have to look deeper into the root that is within each of our hearts. Verse 22, it goes on to say, But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. So Jesus is telling it, you know, you've been taught don't murder. How many people have got that one pretty well figured out? Okay, we know that if we murdered somebody, that would be a sin. Any disagreement there? All right, we're on the same page. But Jesus is taking this, he's like, look, yeah, don't murder anybody. But I'm telling you something that even more, that murder, it actually starts in our hearts. Even before that act was ever committed, that's when the sin was committed. Jesus is giving them the difference between what is a trivial matter compared to an eternal matter. Now, I'm not saying that, that murder is not a trivial matter, all right, when, when we see, uh, you know, the, the, these words, you know, raka, um, I'll, I'll give it a little bit more explanation in just a minute, but maybe to give a description, all right, how, how, how many people, probably most of you, have got brothers and sisters, all right, how many people have ever fought <laughs> with your brother and sister? Is anybody not? <laughs> okay, good. you've never fought with your brother and sister? You just kept them in line. That's what it was. <laughs> but how many, you know, you know, you, you, you know, messing around with your brother or your sister, and you know, you're 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 playing and you're just picking and you're just poking, and that poking turns into hitting, and, and pretty soon it's like something happened. Is like, oh, it's on. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? And then it's like, hmm. You know, you you just okay. Now it is 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 escalated. All right. You know, for whatever reason, that somewhere in that, hey, we're just messing around. To it just got real. Something changed, and that is what Jesus is getting at right here. Because it's at that point it becomes a matter of the heart. All right. When he refers to you know the raka. All right. This word. 
it's, it's, it's kind of loosely translated as somebody with no mind or what we may call like a nitwit or a knucklehead or it's a, it's, it's, it's a what? Uh, it, 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 kind of like a lunatic, but it's not a lunatic. It, it's not a crazy person or anything like that. But it's just something that you would say in jest to kind of get a rise out of somebody, you know, that, hey, we're just, you know, messing around. This is what it was. So in this day, all right, we, we got to understand that when Jesus is teaching the disciples, that he's kind of put yourself in that perspective. So when he's saying, hey, they just call me nitwit. How many brothers and sisters, ever, like, they just told on me, Right. I don't know how many times do we hear, Dad, Mom, you know, Josiah just called me this, or Brenda called me this, and they want to touch me, and they're looking at me. And, oh, my goodness, goodness, good. All right, but <laughs> this is, is kind of the trivial matter. And what they're saying is that, you know, if you said this word, rocket, to somebody, it, it was like in that trivial matter of, of just saying you know, nah, you know they're, they're bugging me. Well, in that time, you know, they had this, this system set up. And it was even back in Moses. If you remember, you know, back in the Exodus, you know, uh, his father-in-law comes and look, you ain't going to be able to judge all these people. You got to gather some people around you to be your judge and help you. Because people got a lot of stuff and a lot of complaints and you're going to be worn out. So he surrounds himself. It's like, all right, you know, you guys deal with this stuff. Well, this is what he's talking about. So at that time, there was a council, and you got a disagreement, you know, with somebody. You bring them before the council, and you could go to prison for whatever, you know, calling them a nitwit or whatever it was because it's just kind of those trivial matters, right? But there is something that, that, that changes, and, and what, what Jesus is kind of describing to his disciples is like, you know, you, you can— you can say something to somebody and they're going to take it before counsel. But what I want you to be aware of is that time when you call them a fool. Now, when you call somebody a fool at that time, it meant that you highly disrespected the decision that they were making. It meant something, all right? And, and so, you know, for that there had to have been a change in their heart. That was the time that it escalated from just becoming a, a, a sibling kind of a thing to, all right, now, song, you, you crossed the line, and now, now we got to deal with some stuff. That's what Jesus was telling them. At this point, there's a change or something that happens inside your heart that takes it to a next level. And this, he receives, he says, this is what will take you down the path to hell. This is what the eternal, not the murder, not, you know, it, it, way before that, just calling somebody a fool. Why? Because it's a change in the heart. What is it about the change in the heart? Because that's where sin entered in. That's where sin entered in. Sin, the wages of sin is what? Death. Jesus came to pay the price for each of us for our sins. Not for the sin of murder. I don't think that anybody murdered anybody in here. I mean, not on purpose. But we're all sinners. We have all had that moment to where we move from just having a, 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 a lighthearted jest into now I have anger. Now I am not showing the fruit of the Spirit. Now this becomes in my heart sin. You might think, and, and you know, whenever... You know, somebody in a leadership position, let's just call it a pastor. All right, Pastor Tiffany and I, Pastor Wayne, Pastor Jim, Joanne. You know, so sometimes you, you think, well, if they say they're sinners, do I want to follow them? Right? How many know we sin? All right? And, 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 and yes, we, we may not murder, but there comes that time to where that, 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 that we cross the line. And at that moment, we have to check ourselves that I have sin in my heart, and what do I need to do? I need to repent. 
I need to repent because there comes a point to where that is, and that is sin. It's sin's just not all about, you know, it's like, all right, you know, don't drink, don't smoke, don't, you know, don't have sex outside of marriage, don't, don't murder anybody. If you don't do any of those and, and you're a pretty good person and you serve, I mean, know that that is not what is going to get you into heaven. That is not it. We still sit. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't do any of those things either. But it comes down to the matter of the heart that we have to look at because that's what God looks at. That's what God looks at. We have to get our heart right before God. He goes on to say in verse 23, it says, Therefore, if you bring a gift to the altar and remember that your brother has something against you, leave that gift there before the altar and go your way. Be reconciled to your brother and then come off your gift. So, how can we come to a holy God with hate or sin in our hearts? How can we come before God with even the slightest bit of anger in our hearts? How can we come before God with even the slightest bit of unrighteousness? We can't. We absolutely cannot do that. We need an advocate. We need a helper. We need Jesus. We need a Savior. Some that, that, that has paid the price for our sin. That's what we need because I want to be in the presence of God. We can feel the presence. Is, is his is presence around us to, this morning? 100%. I mean, you can feel his presence now. But in our hearts, we may be harboring things that is not of God. Anger. Hate. And the, 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 these, these feelings, this is what we got to deal with. I need to deal with what's going on in my heart. That's why I need a Savior. That's why I need Christ. When we have these feelings, because we will have them, we will have these, these times to where, man, my flesh gets the best of me. I, 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 I try to do my best to, to follow God, all right? But I got my flesh right here on this side. And I got the Holy Spirit on this side. Now, I want to live my life because I'm, I'm following after the path that God has for me. And I know that if I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, I know that the path that I will lead is closer to God, right? If I'm on this side, I know where I'm going to go. But sometimes my flesh... It's the best of me. And my flesh doesn't chase after God. My flesh will lead me to other places. <coughs> it will lead, you know, to anywhere other than God. If I make decisions when I am in my flesh, I know that it is not leading in the path that God wants me to lead. How many people have ever made a decision in their flesh. Yeah, all right. It happens. All right. This is what I'm talking about. But this is the moment that you have to discern, am I living my life right now in the, this moment? Am I following my flesh or am I following the Holy Spirit? How do we know? How do we know which one we're talking? Because, I mean... Can we be angry without sinning? Yes, 100%. You can do that. But when that time that there's a change in your heart that becomes more than anger, 
that now we are following our flesh. We're, we're, we're making decisions upon that. And what our decisions, our pathway is leading to is not of God. That means that the fruit that we're producing is fleshly fruit. But if I follow over here the Holy Spirit, the things that are being produced is the fruit of the Spirit, right? So here I should expect to have things like patience and gentleness. Did I say that? <laughs> gentleness, self-control. Um, you know, th th this is what I should be supposed So should I have on this side, if I am... If I'm following the leading of the Holy Spirit in this, if, if I'm demonstrating self-control, am I able to have an anger in my heart here? No. Because that's a fruit that is produced over here on this side of my flesh. Does that make sense? So you have to know and we, we have to, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because of what Jesus is saying here in verse 25. He says, agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge hand you over the officer and to be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you that you will by no means get out of there until you paid the last penny. <laughs> I'm going to make this easy to understand. Uh, Y'all have me. <laughs> Brindley and Josiah, I owe them a lot. I mean, uh, <laughs> whew, I'm using them a lot in the uh, uh, sermon illustrations today. But what they will do, and you've done this too, so it's not just on them, all right? But whenever you're picking a fight, you know, with, with, with your sibling, and you can say, I'm going to go tell mom, right? And, and, and what does... What did Josiah do, all right? He's like, don't tell her, don't tell her, don't tell her. And all the time that they're going, you know, to, don't tell her, you know, you know. What Jesus, that's what Jesus is talking about in this scripture. He's saying, work things out with your adversary before you get to the council. Because once you get to the council, <laughs> you are in their realm. <laughs> work it out quickly, all right? Get things right with your brother or sister before you get to mom and dad. That's where it's no longer in your control. Because what happens then is that both of y'all get up here. <laughs> right? Well, and this, this is what Jesus is saying to his disciples. Like, look, something happens, it's going to happen. But before you bring it up before the council, all right, get it worked out. Get it all worked out because then... You don't even have to worry about none of this. But if you let it go and let somebody else decide, you gotta, you, you, you're you under their punishment, right? You, you, you're going to be what they're going to be. And so Jesus is saying, get this worked out now. This is why whenever we feel that change uh, between just a, a, a bickering or, you know, a, a, a lighthearted jest to, all right, game on, it got real. That point in which it turns to sin, get that thing worked out. Get it worked out then. Work it out with the God. Work it out with another. If I have wronged you, I want to talk about it. I don't want to forget because what happens? Everybody's done this. Somebody did you wrong. And now you're mad. I can't believe they said that. I can't believe they do that. I can't believe that they go up. I, I, and what do you do all night long? Oh, man, it just escalates. It, it just escalates in your thoughts, in your mind. You're like, I ain't never talking to them again. I'm blocking them on Facebook. I'm texting them. I'm blocking them on the number. I mean, they are just so, just, oh, right? And you let your feelings get in the way instead of just saying, hey, look here. We got to talk. And we got to have those tough talks when we say, look here. You did me wrong, and I didn't like it, and I'm not going to let you do that to me again. You hit me hard. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't give you, you know, the reason that you should unblock them or anything like that. I mean, you know, 
you know, work that out on yourself. But I'm just saying that don't let your thoughts and your minds, because when we just live in that, that, that anger and in, in, in that flesh side of us, man, that's when we just begin to sin. Woo, our minds will just go crazy. I beat a lot of people up in my mind. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I, you know, and, but then it comes that time to where it's like, what are you thinking about? Where are my thoughts at? I got to get this in line. I got to get my heart right because what is it? It's a matter of my heart. It's a matter of my heart. I got to get this right with me. I got to get it right with God, but I got to get it right with this other person. Talk. You know, if, if we work things out and talk, you know, amongst each other, things go a whole lot easier. A whole lot easier. I can't tell you the amount of people who've ever left this church <laughs> over something that they had never want to talk about. I, I, for real. I mean, you, you just uh, here today, gone tomorrow, and it's like, what happened? I don't know. No clue. No clue. They don't want to talk. It, it's, I, I, I don't get it. But if I've ever done anything, if, 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 if you give a second thought to something that I've ever said or done something wrong or, man, you just looked at me weird, you didn't say hi, please tell me. Please I don't want, for, for your sake, I don't want you to stew over it because, trust me, I am not, I, don't, I, I am not angry with anybody at all. I don't think about, I pray for you, I, but I'm not angry at nobody. I don't look anybody sideways like, man, where you been? I don't know if you've been, blah. I don't do that. Let's just work it out and get it right, all right? Tell me, we have to communicate these things because why, believe it or not, it's a matter of eternity. It is. It is. Don't let that sin just get a foothold in your life because it will mess you up. That's what we call a root of bitterness. You know what happens when you let a root fester inside of your, your flesh? It becomes infected and it will mess you up. You have to get that thing right. Address it. Address it. The Apostle Paul, he writes in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. So Galatians, not Matthew, all right? We're, we're changing books, still in the New Testament. But here Paul is, is saying to the, he, he wrote this letter to the, uh, the church of Galatia. And he said this in verse 16. He says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not walk in the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you're not under the law now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication uncleanliness lewdness idolatry Sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I have also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Didn't Paul just say what I just said? He said it a long time before I did. But isn't this, this is what Jesus was trying to tell his disciples on the mount. He's like, here, get this stuff straight. But he goes on to say in verse 22, he said, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. So here God's Word shows us a healthy heart is one that is led by the Holy Spirit and not led by our flesh. When we're angry, 
We are not led by the Spirit. But when we're walking in gentleness and self-control, then we can see that we are likely walking in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. This is why it's hard for the person who thinks that they are good to repent of their sins. It's easy to repent of an obvious sin. But what about that sin that has crept in? It too will have an eternal consequence. You see, Jesus was taking the disciples to a deeper understanding and to his word. Paul echoed this message as a disciple of Jesus also. And he, we have this, this kind of before and after clip of, of what Jesus said to his disciples. And then Jesus supernaturally <laughs> discipled the apostle Paul. I don't know how all that occurred. But the Apostle Paul had such an encounter with God that I almost think that he was like supernaturally discipled through the Holy Spirit just to bring revelation and such clarity to what the Father meant that he just got it. I wish I had <laughs> that supernatural encounter that I just got it. Anybody want <laughs> Yeah, it did make my life a little bit easier, I think, but maybe it'd make it much more harder. I don't know. But he placed that mantle now upon us. That mantle to go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. You see, this is what the mandate, the great commission, what are we are to do? We are to make disciples who make disciples. So we have to be discipled. We have to learn, and we have to allow our spirits to be taught in such a way that we look at the scriptures from the point that it was written from Christ himself. That's why we're focusing such time on this sermon. Sermon on the Mount, not this sermon. But when Jesus spoke these words, because it has such an impact, he's like, look, you guys got to get this. Paul got it. And we have this teaching before us now that we all have to get it. Because it's a matter of eternity. It's a matter of eternity for all of us. So what does that look like in your heart? I don't know. I'm going to take you back about an hour. Maybe a little bit more. But I was asking you that I think that if we settle in our hearts today that God is going to remove that space between him and us. What is it that we have to deal with? It's that sin in our life. It's that sin that keeps us from the presence and the blessings of God. It's that sin that we have to do. But am I talking about, man, I, I haven't cheated on Tiffany. I, I, I haven't done any of that. I haven't killed anybody. Those are obvious. But I'm talking about the matter of the heart. This is where we have to let God search us. He said, search me, O Lord, that I may have a clean heart. And when we pray that prayer, we mean that prayer, we're saying, God, reveal some things to me that I may not have understood. Even if I don't understand that, that moment to where it went from, you know, just playing around till, man, I got angry because I was following my flesh. There's sin in your life. And that sin, not my rules, but that sin has to be paid for. 
Remember in the scripture where he says that go before your adversary and get it worked out before a council because you will have to pay for every penny of it. What he's saying is that sin you have to pay for unless you have a savior. On this side of my flesh, on this side of my sin, if I were to die right now with sin in my life, I would have to pay the price for the sin. And what is the price for my sin? Death. I would spend an eternity in hell for the price of that sin. But Christ made a way where there was no other way when he gave his life on a cross. He bridged the gap from my sinful nature into his holy and righteousness, into his presence. And there, through his shed blood, the perfect sacrifice was given. The only sinless sacrifice that was given, the blood that was poured out from his body, was the sacrifice, the only sacrifice pleasing that would remove this sin from my flesh to where God is, to where I can be with him. But how do we do this? How do we do, how do I get rid of and, 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 and make amends for this sin? Well, his word says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, meaning he's the Savior, he's the Messiah, he was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose again, and he's promising to come back. We see this in his word. So if we believe that, and we say, Jesus, you are my Lord, that sin is forgiven. Then the Holy Spirit comes and says, all right, little buddy, I know you can't live in this world all alone. I'm going to come and live within you, and my Holy Spirit will live in you that should you listen to what I'm leading, where I will lead you, you will go. Well, there's those times to where our spirit and the Holy Spirit are at contents with each other. And we say, but I want to go do this, and I've made this choice, and I've sinned. And then the Holy Spirit living with inside of you is like, hey, 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 hey. What are you doing? Get this stuff worked out, because I don't like this. That is the quickening that we need in our lives to say, repent. Whatever you just did, repent. Repent, repent, repent. What did John the Baptist come to Pray, pray, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You see, Jesus is coming back so soon. Don't be messing around with sin. Get it worked out, and you can do that today. And if you remove that, you the fully in the presence of God here on earth. This is where we want to be. This is where... God desires us, and I desire to be with God. It has to be in this spot. God can't meet me on that side. His Holy Spirit will sit in here and say, come on, come on. And he will draw him to you, but it's that choice that I have to deal with that sin in my life. And I have to say, Lord, forgive me. I jacked that one up. So if that's you, turn to your neighbor and say this. He's talking to you now. <laughs> that sin you've got to deal with. How many would love to walk out of church today sinless? There ain't but one way, and it's to repent. And you have to spend a moment with God recognizing and bearing it and saying, Father, forgive me. Would you just please forgive me? That's all of us. Absolutely every one of us. Whether you do that at your seat, 
Maybe you're compelled to come forward to an altar. Maybe you want to spend the next 18 hours lying up here on this pulpit. However you repent in your heart, repent. And if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, ask him. Ask him. He's there. If we confess with our mouth, say, Jesus, you are my Lord. I'm tired of messing around and trying to do this all on my own. Would you be my Lord? Would you be my Savior?